the world has changed so dramatically yes. in the last 20 years, yes. especially with respect to international trade. Mm-hmm. And COVID has exacerbated all the various oh, yeah. issues that we had even prior yeah. uh, to COVID. And so it's, it's, for me, it's been an incredible opportunity, that's what I see it as, to mm-hmm. take over as ITC head in this space. As someone who has worked in the field for 30 years, um, who has experienced it both from the national, because I used to represent Jamaica. My very first posting actually was to Geneva as, yeah. a, as a junior foreign service officer during the Uruguay round negotiations. Yes. Then I went to Washington, D.C. and I was there with the Embassy of Jamaica working on the Free Trade Area of the Americas, CBI, all of those other trade issues for about six years. Um, then I joined the Caribbean Regional Negotiating Machinery, went from there to a law firm. I lasted six months because we had a different approach to life. <laughs> and I didn't think that, you know, I was going to change that culture, but I certainly couldn't change mine. Okay. And then I left, I went to OAS, Organization of American States to the Trade Unit. Essentially, where we are now is that we have to make some key decisions as small island developing states. And one of my key outputs uh, over the last year since I took over, it's now a year and and, and six months, is to develop a seed strategy, a small island developing state strategy that looks specifically at the challenges that small island developing states are facing and are going to face in, in, in the evolving trading arena. We kind of looked at four major areas. The first has to do with our lack of diversification. And I think our visit to the coconut farm, the idea of, you know, the climate smart agriculture, the drip irrigation, the intercropping, all of those are new methodologies that we're trying to bring to bear to help to improve the diversification, not just of our good space, but also of our services. And seeing how we can expand the capacity of small island states to enter the market, but not necessarily enter the market the way we've always entered, which is at the primary commodity level, Mm -hmm. because that has not helped us. And that's been standing for about 400 years. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important that we really begin to utilize our, not just the new technology for agriculture, but the new vision. Mm -hmm. Because right now what is clear is agriculture is not what it used to be. Um, it is now a technological issue, not, not anymore a primary you know, production issue. The second issue that is really even more critical is our level of competitiveness. And how is that competitiveness going to be addressed? One of the key challenges, I would say, has to do with our cost of production. And what is that cost of production related to? Energy costs. This is where looking at climate smart agriculture, but also looking at alternative energy approaches to production come into place. We actually did our last um, small and medium-sized enterprise competitiveness outlook that Minister Kamina Johnson-Smith actually did a segment in for us. And it talked about the potential and the possibilities in going green for improving competitiveness, especially for small and medium-sized enterprises, what the benefits were, how it helped them to actually lower costs, increase their capacity to access markets, gain traction in terms of, you know, um, branding as being produced by lower carbon emissions. All of those things are now becoming more and more important on the international market. And so how do we incorporate green energy, alternative energy into our production? Mm -hmm. This, of course, goes to policy. And to the extent that Jamaica's policy dynamic can now begin to embrace that and to promote it, lower the costs on importation of solar panels, lower the costs on any kind of alternative energy production, looking at grid and off-grid. I know that there are some legal issues (laughs) with respect to our main supplier, but I think it is such a priority that it needs to be addressed in one way or another if we are to really become competitive in this wider space. The third area, of course, is climate change. How are we going to address the issues of climate change and the new rules that are going to begin to become part of the international trading space? I say this because there's already discussion about carbon border adjustment rules. 
and incorporating that in the WTO context. What is that going to mean for small states? While we are completely on board with respect to addressing environmental and climate change issues because we are on the front lines, mm -hmm. we also need to be aware of how those issues are going to be addressed in the context of international trade agreements and what those trade agreements are therefore going to require of us. The fourth issue, which is even probably for me one of the most critical elements because in a sense, everything also rides on that in this new economy. The issue of digital connectivity. Well, e-commerce. If we do, and not just e-commerce, everything. Mm -hmm. Every single thing rides on now being connected. And so we now need to create an economic space that fully embraces and understands that being connected is is akin to having water. It is as fundamental as that. In the same way, if you don't have water, if you don't have electricity, you cannot produce, you cannot thrive. Digital connectedness for SMEs, for small island states, is now critical because everything is now being done online. As we have seen with COVID, how much has gone online, including our education system, and how many kids are lost because of the lack of connectedness, and what are the implications of that down the road? Even as we see how many children have been lost. In 2019. In, the, in 2019. Two alone. years later. Yes. What have, what, how much have we lost due to yes. COVID? Can that same loss then be mm -hmm. transferred third now to a sector such as the agricultural sector. But interestingly, and this is where we also have to change our mindset about agriculture. In our education system, we continue to look at agriculture as something you do because you can't do something else. <laughs> And, and it's it's true across the Caribbean. It's it's an it's a it's a it's a mindset, of course, that has been developed because of historical antecedents, and mm -hmm. we know this. Yeah. But I think if we begin to create the atmosphere and the and the framework for teaching smart agriculture what we saw on that farm, what we're seeing across the world in terms of what is going into the aspects of agriculture that are improving yield, that are increasing the ability to, to you know, intercrop, that are looking at irrigation systems. It is now a scientific endeavor. It is not slash and burn, chop and crop. It is a completely, and I think that if we are able to link this to the whole STEM approach, everybody keeps talking about STEM, but what does STEM mean in the context of, it's not just coding, it's not just about, you know, being in a lab, it's also about how those apply to traditional sectors and how do we translate that into making agriculture, which is actually higher in terms of income than tourism, but nobody likes to say it. But if you look at what we could do, and, and what I like to look at is what I call the continuum. So we look at culture and we're great at it. And we dance and we sing and we have the best guys. We have the best everybody. Right? Yeah. We have from Bob to Shaggy to, you know, every genre, Buju, you mm -hmm. name it. Mm -hmm. And there's nowhere I've ever been in the world that people have not known Jamaica music. Okay. There's nowhere I've ever been in the world that they've not known our sports and our sportsmen. Yeah. From you saying to the cricketers, to yes. beverages, we, they, they know us, yes. they know who we are. Yes. We also have a brand name for the expressiveness of our culture, of who we are, okay. our language, oh, oh, our oh, in your facedness, yes. I call it, yes. <laughs> our ability to always be out front and confident and innovative and creative and everything. So we have that package, that's what I call it. And we have our production. And we don't link the two in any real way. We do it by accident. Our coffee, our cocoa, our coconuts, 
those are all products that can be used in the spa sector and also in the health and wellness sector that we link directly to our sports. We link the sports to our music and to all the other creative aspects of our economy. The brand is everything. The brand is not just that. And that's the weakness. The brand needs to be the excellence of the production element, the excellence of our cultural element, the excellence of our sports, of our tour. Everything needs to be on a continuum. And we now have signed on to the Madrid Protocol. How do we translate that brand identity into moving up the value chain for our exports of goods? For example, we have coffee. I frankly believe that Starbucks should have a requirement to utilize at least 30% of our coffee. It's a local, we call it a local content requirement. I know it's not popular, mm -hmm. but I know others who do it and I know we can find a way to do it. For me, that would be a, a, a nice start. So that we begin to incorporate the taste into our local brand. Yes. And so that creates its own. We have cocoa, some of the best cocoa in the world. Everybody knows. Maybe the best. Maybe the best. We may not be able to compete with Cadbury, but we can do an agreement with Cadbury that says, we give you a brand. You market our specialty Jamaican cocoa, dark chocolate under the Cadbury brand. Is it that we're lacking the vision? Um, I, I don't know if these things have been done. I don't know. But what I'm saying is that these, for me, are quick wins. Okay. Sometimes you can't... What I've learned is, you know, you can't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. <laughs> you know, the older you get, the more you get yes, this, right? Yeah, that expression um, quite in And it's true. So we have, to, we have to understand, okay, we may not be able to run off a Cadbury or whatever, because we have... It's size, huh? Okay. We may not have scale. Okay. But what we have is quality and brand. Yes. And those are two powerful things. Mm -hmm. And we take that quality and brand identity and we do something with Cadbury or we do it with Lindt chocolate in mm -hmm. Switzerland. Mm -hmm. We do it with any of these well-recognized brands yes. out there. And we put the Jamaican line on. Mm -hmm. The same is true for cannabis. I know that there are also issues with the legal, you know, the framework yes, and, and the money and, and yeah. how the money is going to get through. But I believe there are the ways around system. that. Yeah, yeah we so. can, we can. Yeah. But I think also, if you look at it, the, the, the brand and how cannabis even became popular, how did it become popular? The Jamaican, Jamaican. The <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. So there's a natural brand identity, even with respect to cannabis and if we can then begin to translate that into a, a specific brand linked to medicinal usage i have this it's something that i said when was it 2008 when you say in blue the place away yeah right yeah. at bird's nest yeah. and i remember in 2007 we had just built this wonderful thing in trelawney Yes. yes. And I remember saying to someone at the time that, look, I wrote it up on a four page proposal, as with IDB at the time. I said, look, this is what we need to do. We have this brand new, brand new state of the art stadium. It is on the north coast, it's near to the sea. We they were looking at the time of a Western campus for UE. I don't right. think it had opened yet. There's also UTEC that was looking. We have Usain from Trelawney. Natural marriage. Just pull it together. Yeah. Make it not just a sports facility, a high-tech sports facility. Make it also a place for orthopedic surgery, for sports medicine, for spa and wellness overall, spa and wellness health. You know, you have restaurants, juices, etc. Just link and link it into the tourism arena as well. So it would be a natural confluence of tourism, 
of culture, of medicinal value, and that 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 would be like a, a standalone entity that identifies that. So I don't know what has happened since. I I really have not. Kept. But for me, those are the kinds of things that are quick wins, that are natural synergies, and that could catapult Jamaica in a way that says we're committed to sports excellence, we're committed to medicinal enhancement, we're committed to looking at wholeness and wellness, not just at the level of, of traditional medicine, but also alternative medicine. We're looking also at the tourism product and how medicinal tourism can also be incorporated in a very real and tangible way in what we've been calling our wider tourism product. And it's right there. Should this be a Jamaican or a regional issue? Because so many, we have so many things in common across the region. Yes. Should we be looking at that so we advertise ourselves mm -hmm. as um, part of a Caribbean block, brand? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, but each with its, with its own, own individualism. Yes. 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 Okay. It can be. It can. Be. You and I have been around long enough to know that CARICOM is not always the easiest place to get agreement on, on certain things. Um, the, actually, the, the building of that stadium was part of one of the, the few extremely powerful things we did as CARICOM when we agreed to the free movement of all the cricket people. Remember? Yes. That that was the single entry. So once they entered the Caribbean, mm -hmm. they didn't have to go through any other. And remember we, we harmonized the 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 form yeah. so that everybody now used the same form and we created a single space for yeah. the first time. Yeah. Needless to say, as soon as cricket was over, <laughs> we yeah. reverted to form. Yeah. And so that is the frustration I think that a lot feel when you know, yes, the regional approach would be perfect because each of us comes with our own strengths and our own particular interests. But I think it is something that at the international level, you know, in terms of our negotiating framework, I know we do that jointly in a lot of ways and even in, the, in, the, in Brussels and in Geneva and London and so on. Um, but at the national level, we have to develop the kind of capacity to do it before we start talking regional. That, you know, we we can't sell something that we haven't done yet. Right. And so, in my view, we need to do what we need to do first, mm -hmm. which is look at the framework for the connectedness, mm -hmm. looking at the competitiveness element and what goes into that. This the alternative energy. How do we break the stranglehold and the, therefore the costs of electricity and what that means for our production costs. You know, looking at the issue of uh, climate adaptability and mitigation. What are those elements that we're looking at in terms of our agriculture, in terms of, of building resilience? And then looking also at our diversification and how services, because we're 70 odd percent services economy. What is our services framework? What is our services model? What is it that we're doing to enhance those services within within and, and the, the digital connectivity is critically related to that. Mm -hmm.